Okay, I am actually super duper excited for this episode. Uh, this is the culmination of a lot of stuff that's been happening for the past few weeks. So I really, uh, yeah, let's talk about episode 28 of Comrade Revice. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm super excited. This is a super good episode to uh, spoil the rest of this video uh, for those of you who are going to watch this all the way through, which is according to YouTube analytics, very, very no one. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame anyone. This is just me talking to myself for around 10 or so minutes, hopefully more, as I excuse my comrade fandom to myself. So, yeah, let's take into the episode. Okay, so for those of you who don't remember last week's episode, it ended uh, basically with Vice being completely, boom, uh, I cannot talk, completely controlled by GIF and completely out of control, rampaging as GIF is going around eating people, and Ocelotta is basically going mad with power as he's trying to obtain uh, greater power to basically take over the world. Uh -huh. uh, so we pick up from there with George arriving on the scene as he was leaving uh, the base last week, taking the Demon's Driver alongside a new Vice Stamp with him so that he could try to contain the rampaging Icky Vice. Uh, this, this, is, this is a revise, the rampaging revise. <laughs> so he arrives on the scene and basically explains that, hey, I have this new vice stamp. It's going to do, it might do the same thing as the crow vice stamp, as it might be as it's designed to destroy one of the two. But because they're so close, much closer than Daiji and Kegaro, uh, this could actually, actually end up saving them or erasing both of them. So, ultimate gamble move time. As George transforms into demons. He, yeah, he, he henshins. He doesn't say henshin, he says come on for his henshin cry. And I kind of love that. And he, he basically just makes a bunch of, like, writer jokes. And speaks in A-list the whole fight. And I'm just like, more of this please and thank you. <laughs> right, although I think this might just be a one-time thing. Especially considering next week's episode. Uh, but yeah. So George... Uh, he transforms, and he just a lot of webbing. I think this is the most webbing we've seen demons shoot out in a fight. And basically, it's him and Sakura trying to restrain Revice, so Daiji can hit him with the Vice Stamp. Which you think would be easy, because you just have to hit him with the Vice Stamp. But I guess there's a lot more to it, or at least you have to hit him in a certain spot for it to count. And so yeah, so Daiji has to hit him with the Vice Stamp, so that he'll stop rampaging and maybe fix himself. So they eventually do do that in a rather cool scene, and then he explodes! He doesn't literally explode, he kind of does that little internal explosion thing, uh, and he goes unconscious. And so he'll be out He'll be out for a while, but on the outside, uh, Ocelotta is basically uh, still mad with power, and Aguilera is there, as you remember, I didn't mention her last week, but she's basically been following the gift coffin around uh, because she wants to become one with GIF. Whether that means her being eaten or whatever. She just wants to be one with Gif because that was her entire life's purpose. Uh, and Gif slaps her in the face. <laughs> I find it funny because, you no, know, when I watched this episode and then the Oscars thing that happened. And I didn't even watch the Oscars. I just heard about it after the fact. And I was like, oh, that happened. I saw two big ass slaps this week. <laughs> On the same day. Yeah, uh, so the Gif coffin slaps her in the fucking face. And obviously she's mostly devastated, and then Ocelotta decides to rub salt in the wound by telling her because she's a phase 3 dead man, she can no longer serve as Gif's vessel. Which, that sucks, kinda wish she would've told her beforehand, but I think that might have been his plan, uh, as a backup plan, because he takes the Amala Kala's Vi Stamp alongside the Gif Vi Stamp, and he hits himself with the Amala Kala's Vi Stamp, and then hits Gif with the Gif Vi Stamp, to merge with the gift coffin to become a level 4 dead man. The first level 4 dead man to exist. <clears throat> so obviously now, big boss fight time. Everyone tries to fight him. But even though they can get some solid hits in on him, he heals too damn fast for them to do any major damage. It's essentially the common... <laughs> it's essentially... The thing with the comment with the villain in the re in the zero one movie, like, oh, he's getting hurt, but he's healing too damn fast for it to matter. <laughs> um, this one doesn't even involve nano machines, son. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll have fun with that when I eventually get to zero one. 
But anyway, yeah, so they're kind of fucked. <laughs> and eventually he takes them all out. George gets taken out because he basically is a finisher, but he can't maintain the demon's transformation, so he gets in the, so he gets out. He knocks out Sakura with the hit, and then knocks out Daiji with the even stronger hit. That basically puts Daiji on his ass. And so when all seems lost, meanwhile in Icky's head, so yeah, so yeah, this entire time Icky's been kind of traveling in the kind of weird mental dreamscape place, which obviously is them repurposing sets, but it's kind of surreal because it's like just random shit everywhere, and then we see the fucking Giftarians in the bath, and it's like, yeah, yeah, this is weird. This is entirely weird. Interesting point is that during the dreamscape, he has a conversation with Vale that might be the actual Veil, vale, and not just a, like a weird mental projection of Veil, vale, who takes his dad's appearance because obviously Veil's really attached to that body. So you know, no, he he'll take that appearance because we don't know where Veil vale went off to. So he's probably is going back to Genta's or Junpei's body. As his real name is Junpei, but he changed it to Genta when he got married. All right, right before he got married. And anyway, I'm definitely going to talk about the Veil special when that's all wrapped up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, he has a conversation with Veil. And Veil basically tells him to just live his life and ditch his family. Icky doesn't want to do that. We flash. He has a bit flashback to Days of the Fire. And he confronts Vice, who looks... Well, he's in, well, it's basically Icky's actor in the Vice suit without the uh, helmet part or the mask part. So, you know, he has Icky's face and everything, which, again, makes sense. He is Icky's demon, so I guess without his demon looks, he would look just like Icky, similar to Daiji and Kegaro. So, you know, Vice is attacking Icky, and, well, Icky decides that he'll also protect Vice, and I guess that means he'll protect Vice from Gif, and... Then he regains control of his body to use the new Vice Stamp, the Thunder Gale Vice Stamp, and does a really cool henchin where he rips the the hijack suit off, or at least the outer layer of the hijack suit, because this is one of those suits where it's clearly a suit overlaid on top of the original suit, or at least most of the original suit, as extra armor pieces, and transforms into the... Uh, Thunder Gale form, or Thunder form, I don't know what this form is officially called, but this is the first form he calls himself Revice. Uh, technically speaking, that was also in, uh, in uh, Jack Vice, but this is officially the first form that is called Revice. Uh, so that's, that's kind of cool. I did joke early on in the season that eventually he's going to have a form that's just going to be called a Revice or a version of one, and here it is. Uh, although this is the, this is the super form to the super form, so this is definitely not the final form, which we're probably gonna get in like ten or so more episodes. I don't know. Uh, honestly speaking, who else can get upgrades anymore? Because everyone has, like, except for Sakura, Daiji has, seems like he has his final upgrade. I guess we have over demons to look forward to, and I, if they decide to give Sakura an upgrade, which everyone's just like, nah, they don't need to give her an upgrade; they need to give her a new weapon, which I also kind of agree with. Uh, but anyway, he uses, obviously, lightning speed to whoop Osaleta faster than he can heal. Which, Zero One wants his speed back. Because, <laughs> you know, that was, that was, like, honestly, that was, like, three of Zero One's uh, power-ups was just, I'm faster now. No, that was two, because we had, uh, we had Zero Two, and then we had, uh... <clears throat> Shining Hopper, which basically their whole thing was being super fast, which you know is a, is a cool power, but you can clearly tell that they're still using some of the after effects from uh, from Zero One. At least they they know how to use those effects, so they're just reusing them, which is fine. I'm I'm not gonna be marketed from reusing effects. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, so it's a cool but quick fight, pun not intended, and Osleta is taken out, and because Osleta's actor got his flowers, obviously. He's gonna die. So, yeah. The gift coffin, which he's separated from, obviously, basically takes in and absorbs Osaleta, killing him as he flashes back to his time as a dead man. I think he might have... Like, I think it's implying that he kind of liked that time period. Or at least 
he looks on it somewhat fondly, although his last words are, I guess I couldn't make the world mine, as he's eaten by Gif and essentially killed, as the Gif coffin breaks away, and we get to see at least a little bit underneath the coffin to Gif, who flies away, and we don't know where he went, as everyone decides to go about you know, returning to some simply of normal life for now, because you know the fight's not over yet, but they still they don't know where to go from here. So, it kind of breaks off from like three little mini epilogues. Uh, the shortest ones are, he goes back to the bathhouse, obviously, and works with his mom. Uh, Genta is away now. He remembered his, he has regained his memories of being Vale. And is basically not in a good spot right now. As him and Boo are moving away, running away from something. Maybe Vale, maybe Phoenix or at least a, or maybe a secret group of Phoenix, I don't know. But yeah, they're running away from something to keep Junpei or Genta, whichever one you want to call him, keep him safe away from whatever's tormenting him, which, again, could be Vale. I don't know because we don't know where Vale went. Uh, meanwhile, Iki's obviously at the Bass House with his mom as they're basically getting things back in order from... All the everything that was going on in the bathhouse since the comedy duo episode. Which, honestly, is making a lot has happened since then. <laughs> in terms of the bathhouse continuity. Oh, Also, I didn't mention about Aguilera. She just kind of walked off again. And hopefully they'll deal with that without killing her. Because it'll be kind of mean spirit to kill her now. Considering her life's been completely destroyed. Although, you know, Julio did try to get her to come with him. I guess they're just going to stay at the bathhouse together or something. I don't know what his plan was from that. Uh, but supposedly he's still at the bathhouse. We don't see him again. But I, I, I imagine he's still there because he has nowhere else to go. Uh, nowhere to where his actual parents are. Anyway, Sakura goes to Weekend. And she takes George with her, and George sees his dad again for the first time, or his daddy, as he calls him in English, which I find kind of, I always find it kind of funny, but I guess it's like an endearing term, just how close he is to his father. George is kind of pissy, I mean, who wouldn't be pissy if they found out their dad who faked their death was still alive, and basically doesn't even get a cool, good explanation about, hey, why did you not tell me you were alive? And he's just told, you'll understand one day when you're a parent. Anyone who has kids, any anyone who hears that line from their parent, you immediately know the bullshit. You're just going to call immediately call bullshit on them, as George does effectively in this scene, as he effectively calls bullshit on his dad, even though Sakura says they'll need to work together to stop GIF. Uh, George says fuck it and leaves. <laughs> I don't think he'll tell Phoenix about his dad, but he definitely ain't working well with daddy right now. Uh, but Sakura says that she'll work to kill Gif or destroy Gif. Obviously, for the sake of protecting the peace, also for her family's sake, because, you know, she's seen how her family's connected to Gif and how that's troubling them, but also potentially for Aguilera's sake as well, because she has this bomb with Aguilera. And finally, Daiji is pulling a Suzaku, as I call it, if you're a fan of Kogias, you know what I mean, as he's returned to Phoenix despite knowing that they're a deliberately corrupt organization, as he decides to wipe out the rotten core of the organization. As I say, pulling a Suzaku from Code Geass. <laughs> so, yeah, the three siblings are still, you know, they still have this deal with the demons thing, but they'll have their path set of destroying Gif in their own ways. But working together to achieve the dream of freeing them, their family, and the world from Gif's influence. Although, I don't know if that would wipe out all the demons, considering the fact that, you know, they're kind of cool with theirs, or at least two of them are, or maybe three, because Daiji and Kagura seem cool with each other by the end. Either way, that's the episode. Okay, so if you can't tell from how much I just ended up talking about the episode, this was a really good episode of Revice. Uh,. Obviously, the fights were pretty good. I do like the symbolism of Icky and Vice and their whole thing. And I really, really loved uh, watching George finally hinge in. That was probably like the second best part of the episode outside of the <clears throat> the Thunder Gale fight. Also, also that's his death. It was honestly a bit sad to see him go like that. In honesty, he was 
a pretty good <laughs> asshole villain for when we had him on screen. I I loved him in that position and in that role. And you know, if he if he comes back as like a spirit or something, just for the just for like some weird flashbacks, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to it if like they have another weird dream sequence and also let us just end gif or something if someone has to like dive inside of him for some reason or another. Uh yeah. So overall Overall good episode, really good. This is this episode's also considered the end of part one of the series. Although in my personal take, I see the destruction of the Dead Man's base as the true end of part one, and this is the end of part two, but this is in terms of direction the official end of part one of the revised story. And considering how far we've gone in part one of this story I'm wondering what part two is going to have, because obviously we have to deal with Gif. There technically are no more dead men left, because the only one left is Aguilera, who really doesn't have any resources on her own to cause much trouble, although they eventually will have to deal with her in some way, or shape, or form, whether that be you know, giving her the rider stomp to remove her demon, and or uh, trying to save her from... Maybe suicidally plunging herself into GIF or trying to merge with GIF on her own or something like that. I don't know. We also have, you know, Daiji pulling a Suzaku and trying to cleanse Phoenix of the corruption within it. Considering the fact that we know that at least the director is essentially a cultist. He's not officially a dead man cultist, but he is, he is all the dead man cultist stuff just without the official branding of being a dead man. And also, who's going to be our going villain? Like, we're going to have to have a forward-facing villain. Aguilera definitely wants it down for summoning the Giftarians, unless, unless Gift can just do that on his own now, which I don't see why he wouldn't. He should have the Gift Vice stamp now. Although, what form will he take? Will he just be straight-up monster form? Or will he have, like, a human guise? Like, maybe, like, an Evolt situation? I keep referencing Evolt. And he, like, Evolt's a really good villain. But, man, built-in game was weird. I'll talk about that when I get to build. Overall, this leaves, this closes... the. This does what any good quote-unquote finale should do. If this is like a true series finale. It closes the door on a lot of things, but leaves a lot of the doors open and then opens several more doors to go forward. And I, I am just down with that. I am fully... Excited to see where we go next. Although next week's episode looks to be a weird one. I won't spoil what the episode is. But it looks to be a weird episode next week. And you know what? I might be down with some lighthearted weirdness considering the honestly trilogy of episodes that we've had that led up to this point. So, again, good episode. And I look forward to seeing where we go from here. And hopefully next week's episode will be super entertaining, considering it's going to be a really <laughs> weird one. Although we do have more George on screen interacting with Sakura, which is honestly coming kind of the funniest shit for some reason. Because he just re refuses to call her by her name. Like, even in the middle of the fight, he's still calling her Karate Girl. <laughs> and I just like, <laughs> at some point you have to say her name, or you're just going to keep referring to her as Karate Girl forever. Uh... Anyway, I love it. I I love this episode. And I love I love seeing George fight. <laughs> it, it it was cool, and obviously people are pointing out the uh, visual references with the Henshin poses of like, like, uh, like some of the stuff from like OG writer, uh, like original writer and Ichigo and Nigo and stuff like that. People are pointing this stuff out like that. I, who have not seen OG Kamen Rider, outside of, like, the first two or three episodes, because, I mean, they're iconic. I hadn't had to watch them. I can't really spot the poses. I do know that the Thunder Gale Vice Stamp being somewhat powered by the wind is a clear reference to Ichigo, considering, you know, his whole deal was he's powered by the wind, or at least his suit was powered by... You know, transfer a transformation caused by the wind, and that, that's why that's why he do the the backflip jump to get that wind going. And yeah, okay, I'm done with enough rambling. That's enough. I'll see all of you guys next time.